Hello friends, welcome to our service of morning prayer for the 15th of January, 2023. It is the second Sunday after the Feast of the Epiphany. The Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. To all who receive him, he gave power to become children of God. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them return to the Lord. And he will have compassion. And to our God for he will richly pardon. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry we humbly repent for the sake of your son Jesus Christ have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name amen almighty God have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring us into eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our service this morning follows the format of morning prayer from the Book of Alternative Services of the Anglican Church of Canada. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O oh, come, let us worship. Now the Vanity, Psalm 95, verses 1 to 7. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all God. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 49 verses 1 to 7 and Isaiah writes 
Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The land called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. The Lord made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have sent my strength, I've spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and, and that Israel might be gathered to him? For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 40. And we read Psalms, Psalm 40, we read verses 1 to 12. It is a psalm of David. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits, or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the roll of the book it is written concerning me. I love to do your will. O oh my God, your law is deep in my heart. I proclaim the righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I do not restrain my lips. And that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your voice, let your love, and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading for today 
comes from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. St. Paul writes, Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sacrificed in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. And today we read John chapter 1 verses 29 to 42. John chapter 1 verses 29 to 42. St. John writes, The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing him, baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he explained, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the anointed one. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, 
son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated as Peter. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And so, friends, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Over the last uh, few years, uh, both in our parish and uh, in our diocese, both uh, we've adopted uh, as our mission statement the following proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ for the making of disciples. Proclaiming, of the, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ for the making of disciples. That mission appears in almost every one of our bulletins in our parish. And newsletters and annual reports and other publications across the diocese and in in, in many uh, parishes uh, in in our uh, bishop's jurisdiction it uh, serves as a measuring stick or a or standard upon which we would measure that which we do as ministers of Christ in our our area in New Brunswick in all our work we are called to continually ask the question does all that we do and all that we are contribute to Christ's mission of bringing the good news to everyone we meet so that they too will be encouraged as followers and believers in Jesus the Christ. Now, clearly, that is a big question, but it goes to the very heart of what it means to be a Christian and how we allow the Spirit of the living God to work in and through us in building the kingdom of God. Each of us being baptized into the household of God is called to be an, an imitator of Christ as ministers and enablers of God's word in our world. To be an imitator of Christ as ministers and an, and 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 enablers of God's word in our world. Our readings today tell us how that call is to be accomplished. Isaiah chapter 49 verses 1 to 7 tells us about Israel's mission as God's servant people. Their mission is not just to return the Israelites to their homeland after two generations of being exiled in Babylon, but to bring the good news of God's redemption to all the world. This was the mission of God's people long before Christ came to show the way, and it continues to be the mission of of his church right here right now in 2023 in psalm number 40 verses 1 to 12 that we read earlier we heard the psalmist rejoice and thank god for his recovery from a serious illness rather than making a ritual sacrifice or special offering his way of expressing gratitude is to tell others of his wonderful delivery. He has been delivered out of the hands of death. Like King David, he 
we too are called to tell all who will listen about what God has done for us and in our lives. We are called to our testimony of the wonders of God in, in all that we are. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 1 to 9 is the opening of, of the first of Paul's two letters to the people of Corinth. It begins in the, in the uh, formal salutation, uh, which was the fashion for correspondence of that time. Some scholars tell us that uh, Sosthenes may have been the scribe to whom Paul dictated his letter. Still others debate whether he might also have been the, ru the ruler of the synagogue in Corinth during Paul's ministry there. And you can see that reference in, in Acts chapter 18, uh, verse 17. Nonetheless, in his opening prayer, Paul thanks God for the faith exercised by the people in Corinth. They have been greatly enriched spiritually and strengthened to live Christ's way until he comes again in glory. Their reward for faithfulness is a life of eternal fellowship with Christ. Once more, we are called to see our lives with Christ and in Christ as part and parcel of who and what we are for today, for tomorrow, and for all eternity. John chapter 1 verses uh, 29 to 42 is, is, is somewhat different from the baptismal narratives found in the other three Gospels. John recognized Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. This statement of faith had roots in the ancient Jewish Passover of sacrifice, which the church had later adopted as part of the Christian order of worship for Holy Communion. Every Holy Communion is a reenactment of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for all humanity. I think it's important to note that nowhere in the Gospel does John ever say that he baptized Jesus. You may have noticed that there were two kinds of baptism described. John says that while he baptized with water, Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit. It's also John, not Jesus by the way, who points out that the Spirit descended like a dove upon Jesus. Jesus came, uh, John came as a preacher of repentance, yet he told his followers that they were to look to Jesus alone for the pardon of their sins. It is faith in his sacrifice for the sins of the whole world that brings eternal life. Jesus alone proclaims John takes away the sin of the world and purchases a pardon for all who repent and believe in him. John encourages our faith in Jesus, the way, the truth, and the light. He reminds us that as God has given his promise to those of old, he has also fulfilled his promise with an even greater and more vivid signposts to follow in the person of Jesus the Christ. 
in announcing the appearance of the Holy Spirit at our Lord's baptism, John wants us to understand that God himself bore witness to Jesus as the Son of the Most High. This was the es essence of John's testimony. And this is the testimony which we are called to declare as people of faith. Jesus is the one whom God has offered to be with us wherever we are and whatever situation we might find ourselves in. So friends, in each of our readings for today, the second Sunday after Epiphany, we have a message that is meant to inspire us to uh, inspire us in our work as people of faith. First, Isaiah tells us how we, as God's servant people, are to bring the good news of God's redemption to all people wherever they may be found. Secondly, our psalm tells us that we are not only to recognize the healing and delivering power of the Most High God, but to celebrate that power by proclaiming Christ to those around us. Thirdly, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul thanks God for the faith of the church in Corinth and shows us how a life of fellowship with Christ Jesus leads to a greatly enriched personal and spiritual life. So finally, the Gospel of John tells us that, like John the baptizer, we are called to bear witness to the work and power of God's holy and life-giving spirit, giving God the glory for the many blessings he offers to his people each and every day. Friends, my prayer today, therefore, is that we will all hear God's word through the scriptures and stand ready to declare his truth in thought, word, and deed to the ends of the earth. Inspired by the life, death, resurrection, teachings and example of Jesus Christ, let us all go out into all the world, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ for the making of disciples. And to this, friends, we say, Amen. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be all praise, honor, dominion, and glory from this day forward and forevermore. Amen. Let us proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ for the making of disciples. So we've heard the word of God open to us through the scriptures. Let us recite the Apostles' Creed as an affirmation of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So friends, as we uh, come to this time of, of prayer, 
let us bring our cares and intentions, our joys and our sorrows, and cast them on him who has been sent by God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our bishops and for all clergy and people, and for all those who minister at home or abroad, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Charles, our King, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our cities and towns, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather and for abundant harvest for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, and especially those for whom our prayers are desired. As unworthy as we are, we pray for our brothers and sisters. We pray for Steve and Jane, for Danny and Anne, for Paul, for Julie and Eunice, for Jenny for Tom, for Jesse, for John, for Peggy and Louise, for Donnie and Michael, for Libby, for Lois, for Mike, for Jenna and Laudia, for Diane and Hilda, for Catherine and Charlie, for Renee and Jean and Logan, for Jenna, for Alan, for Mary, for Terry, for Janet, for Riley, for Richard, for Dawn, for Canon Thomas, for Rita, and for anyone else known to us or unknown who are in need of God's healing hand today. We pray for prisoners and captives and for their safety, health, and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you, and have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And we call it for the second Sunday after the Feast of the Epiphany. We pray together. Almighty God, 
Your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So friends, as we bring this short time of worship and celebration to a close, let each of us remember that we have a role to play in the building of God's kingdom on this earth. That we are to proclaiming, we are to, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ for the making of disciples in our lives, in our hearts, and in our minds. Friends, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his everlasting countenance upon you and give you peace. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.